I'm making turkey for my holiday dinner and I need to put it into brine, so I thought I would bring you along and let you see my process. But before we get into that, if you're new to my channel, I'm Denise Jordan and I teach women to make wise home health and beauty decisions. So if you want to learn more about making and keeping a home, hit that subscribe button and double tap that little bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, let's jump into it. I have this nice big turkey right here and I need to put it into brine for my holiday dinner. And I like to put the turkey into brine because the brining just makes it so much more succulent when it roasts. There's something about the combination of the spices that just kind of draw fluid and flavor into the turkey so that when I roast it, it is not dry and it tastes amazing. So let's get that started. I've got all the ingredients that I need lined up on the counter, but somehow I've lost some footage. My grandchildren were here while I was preparing this, and I was a little distracted, so please bear with me. But I will tell you each of the ingredients as we go along. And since I'm using Martha Stewart's brining solution, I will link her video in the description box, as well as put a list of the ingredients that I actually used in the description box. So I needed six cloves of garlic, so I just mashed down on the garlic to crack the garlic skins. And then once those were removed, I pressed down on them again really firmly to just kind of smush them up. And then I used two onions. And since I am making brining solution and not stock, I discarded the onion skins. I always use Martha Stewart's brining solution. It just makes for such a juicy turkey. It's no fail. So I use this every year, but if there's something that I'm missing from the list of ingredients, I just sub it out with what I've got at home. Now that I'm ready to actually start the brining solution, I add two quarts of water to my pot. And then I add a cup and a half of kosher salt. And here's where I added my apple cider, my cup of apple cider, since I didn't have the Riesling wine that Martha called for. I also added two tablespoons of whole coriander seeds, and then she also calls for juniper berries, but since I didn't have those, I put in a couple sprigs of rosemary, two tablespoons of whole black peppercorns, one tablespoon of fennel seeds, one teaspoon of brown mustard seeds. You can use black or brown, I had brown. And then I just gave that a little stir. And then here's where I'm adding my bunch of fresh thyme. And I had some fresh thyme growing in a pot on my porch, so I dropped that in. And then six bay leaves. And then I just give that a little stir and let it come to a simmer. And it has such an aromatic fragrance. Now it's time for me to get that turkey ready. So I go ahead and get that outer wrapping off of it. And then I'm going to remove the innards from the turkey itself. So as I rinse the turkey off, and I know that's controversial, but I do wash my turkey. As I rinse it off, I make sure that I take the innards out of the turkey. There's a few goodies in the neck cavity and even more goodies in the body cavity. And you want to make sure you take those out before you roast your turkey. I can't tell you how many people tell me that they cooked their first turkey and didn't realize those were in there and went to serve the turkey and those were inside. So be sure and get those out.
And then I like to rinse the turkey over very carefully inside and out. And you'll notice that I've kind of moved everything aside on my counter. And then I'm putting those innards in a bowl so I'm not sitting that turkey juice and those particular germs on my counter. And throughout the whole process, I practice good hand washing and washing down my sink. So now I'm gonna put one of the largest pans that I have in the sink and then slip my brining bag in that. And then the turkey goes inside the bag. And my brining solution is cooling while I'm doing all of this. But then I'll cool it down even more by adding some water to the solution because I don't want to pour hot water on top of that turkey. So I'll add six more quarts of water to the brining solution because we need seven quarts of water in all. So I just pour that in my solution and it just, like I said, it just helps to cool that off. And then I give it a good stir just to make sure that the spices are distributed throughout. And then I'll just pour that in my brining bag on top of the turkey. And then I add in my onions and my fruit. And I like to use oranges and sometimes I'll even use apple slices. But since I've got the apple cider in, I'm just using orange slices this time. And you want to make sure that your turkey is submerged in the brining solution. And if it floats up just a little bit, then you can take a dish and put it on top of the turkey and press it down and then close your bag. That way all of the turkey is submerged. And then I twist the bag shut and close it with a zip tie. So I finally got my turkey into brine and you saw how easy it was. The hardest part is that it's so heavy once you get all the juices and the fruits and all of that in there. But one of the things that Martha asked for was Riesling wine and I don't have any of that. And since it's kind of a sweet wine, I added a cup of apple juice and then the orange slices to kind of add that little fruity flavor that I'm hoping will kind of complement the rest of the, the flavors that I've got going on in here. And um, so now I'm going to have the hubby lift it out. He'll put it in a cooler for me. Normally you would refrigerate it overnight, but my fridge is already full with a lot of other things. So he's going to put it in a cooler for me. And then um, I'll take it out tomorrow. I'll get it out of the brine and then I'll get it prepared to put in the oven. Now here's another thing I want to make sure you get. It is best to put the turkey in the refrigerator and let it sit overnight because you're more likely to be able to maintain a constant temperature. A cooler is not the best thing to do, but right now my refrigerator is full and so I'm going to set it on ice and my husband will make sure that it's completely covered and he'll check it for me once during the night. And then I put these giblets in this bowl so that I can work with them in a little bit, but I didn't want to have any kind of turkey juice or anything like that on my counter. And I tried to move aside like all my normal 
kitchen decor from over here just so I didn't splash any poetry juice on them. And let me just say that the new theory is that you don't wash your poetry. You don't wash your chicken. You don't wash your turkey before you cook it. I just can't seem to not do that. So when I do wash it, I do show how I make a concerted effort to clean up with the Clorox kitchen cleaner. But today's school of thought is don't wash your poetry. It, that when you cook it, the cooking itself will kill any bacteria that's on it. And the thought is that if you wash it in the sink, if there's any splashing of water or poetry juice, you might splash some salmonella or some germs up there and leave yourself open for contamination from that way. So I will say, current thought is do not wash your chicken, do not wash your turkey. I wash mine because I'm old school, but then I do practice good hand washing techniques all throughout and I'll wash everything down with the Clorox that I've touched, including my camera. So the handle, the faucet, and then I use paper towels and not a sponge or a cloth for this cleanup because then it's going to go right in the trash. watching me put my turkey into brine. I'm going to let it sit now for a 24 hour period. I'll take it out tomorrow morning and then I'll prepare it for roasting. If you like this video, I do have some other videos that you might enjoy, particularly how to roast a turkey because I've got a video that shows you how I do that. And I do show you in that video me taking it out of a different brine that I'm doing today and then I get it prepared for roasting. So I will Put that video above and also link it below so that you can check it out at your leisure. And you also might want to take a look at my Thanksgiving one-on-one -on -one playlist because in that playlist I have things such as how to make mac and cheese, how to make candy yams, how to make collard greens, all kinds of foods that you might want on your holiday table. So even though it's my Thanksgiving one-on-one -on -one playlist, it's actually my holiday foods playlist. And just so you know, I've raised three children. I've managed a home for more than 45 years and I'm a nurse by profession. So if you want to learn more about making and keeping a home, cooking and cleaning and laundry and health and beauty, subscribe. I would love to have you as a member of the TNT community. In the meantime, this is Denise Jordan saying goodbye. I will see you next time.